Before we start today's video, I would like to take a minute and thank today's sponsor, Colon Brew. Not only have they helped support Paranormally Listed, but they have also helped make healthier changes in my life. About two months ago, we released three people who survived beyond all odds, and our sponsor for that video was Colon Brew. At that time, I was hit with unwelcome health issues and I needed to start taking better care of myself. Luckily, I was introduced to Colon Brew, and I am feeling great. Not only does it help me stay regulated, I feel less bloated and have more energy. Also, it helped me control my sugar cravings and make me feel fuller longer. With a few diet changes, my blood glucose levels are getting back on track and my cardiovascular health is looking good. One of the main ingredients in Colon Broom is psyllium husk, which can help relieve occasional constipation, diarrhea, bloating, flatulence, and related abdominal pain. So if you're looking for something easy to add to your diet, try Colon Broom. Not only does it have a great taste, it is sugar-free, gluten-free, vegan, and non-GMO digestive supplement. So there is no risk to trying it. For our viewers, Colon Broom has an amazing early Black Friday sale going on right now. Just go to colonbroom.org slash paranormally listed. Discover our epic sale and score six months supply of Colon Broom at an astonishing 65% off discount. Act fast, this exclusive deal won't last long. Apply the code PARANORMALLY at checkout for an additional 10% off your entire purchase. Tap the link in the description box below to seize your discounted colon broom supply before it's gone. So don't wait to help improve your health gut. Go with the number one in the number two. By doing so, you will be helping support Paranormally Listed. So again, click on the link below and get your supply of colon broom. But wait, colon broom has made it even better by introducing their free to download app. The app's features include colon broom, water, bowel movement, weight, and symptom tracking. Also personalized reminders to keep you motivated. Detailed insights to better understand your gut health. Free personalized weight loss plans, achievements, and leaderboards. A daily dose of shitty jokes and motivation. So thanks again to colon broom for sponsoring this video and helping me make better health changes. Movies have a way of tapping into authentic feelings and emotions that many people experience. However, it's less often that movies predict the future. Here are three movies that, when looking back at them, we realize were frequently way ahead of their time. Number three, The Truman Show. Being filmed all day, every day, for an audience, it doesn't seem so shocking or unbelievable in 2023 but back in 1998, it was positively prophetic. The Truman Show stars Jim Carrey as the titular Truman, a man whose entire life is being filmed and disseminated to an audience worldwide. The only catch is that Truman is completely unaware that his life is being broadcast and that it is completely constructed. In 2023, filming ourselves doing mundane, everyday activities is commonplace as people livestream themselves doing various activities, including playing video games, chatting with followers, or working out. Not to mention the various reality shows that burst onto the scene in the early 2000s and never went away. We become accustomed to seeing and hearing about people's lives. Every second has a status update. But let's go back to 1998, before television shows like Big Brother, a show where a group of people live in a house together while people watch, grace our television screens. Big Brother is a show that originated in the Netherlands in 1999 and hit American screens with its first iteration of the show in the year 2000. Watching Truman sleep while being broadcast worldwide is reminiscent of the live feeds for Big Brother, in which viewers can watch unedited going-ons inside the house all day, every day. 2000 was the same year that the first American season of Survivor aired. Survivor, a show where a group of strangers are dropped on a deserted island and left to fend for themselves while people watch, has now had over 40 seasons of program air. The Bachelor, a show in which a male suitor dates a large group of women at the same time, nearing the group down to one whom they propose, first aired in 2002. The show was later followed up with The Bachelorette, where the suitor was female. The Joe Schmo Show, a series that was set up as a reality show that is completely constructed and scripted for everyone involved except one player, first aired in 2003 
and the first Real Housewives show, The Real Housewives of Orange County, aired its first season in 2006. A few shows predate The Truman Show, including The Real World, which premiered on MTV in 1992, and even An American Family, which followed The Loud Family way back in the early 1970s, but these were considered fringe shows at the time. Now these type of shows have become commonplace and a dominating force on television. In The Truman Show, the viewer is given a glimpse into the behind the scenes of the production and Truman inside his reality. The viewer watches as Kristoff, the director played by the amazing Ed Harris, and the rest of the producers construct not only the world around Truman, but also how the viewers consume the show. Kristoff directs the music, how the shot looks, and the colors. All this comes together to create a manufactured moment that is influenced by Truman's reality, but manipulated for the audience's pleasure. This also happens in reality television. Maybe the way the people on Real Housewives are reacting to certain scenarios is real. Perhaps they were told information to make them upset. Maybe they're only in a certain mood because the production set it up that way and they may have never found themselves in that situation in real life had it not been for the show. Reality television just doesn't happen. Many people are behind the scenes creating situations and then editing the footage to create a juicy and exciting storyline for the viewer. The biggest difference between Truman and people on reality TV is that Truman is unaware of his presence on the show and when he found out about it, he didn't like it. Now, people are signing up for it. Furthermore, Truman is not interested in continuing his life in front of the cameras once he figures out what's happening. In real life, people are flocking to reality TV and social media to make themselves known to the world. In a deep dive video on YouTube by The Take, they question what is lost when we lose our privacy. They argue that The Truman Show is a movie about valuing privacy and what we lose when our privacy is taken away from us. This question is certainly relevant to the way people share on social media. Consider family channels on YouTube where families record and share their lives, from potty training their kids to discipline and sharing vulnerable moments, all likely without the children's understanding or consent. What is lost for these children in these scenarios? Also, what is lost for everyone when everything needs to be content for consumption? The take argues that people begin performing their lives and play parts for the audience. Interestingly, many people in the cast and crew of The Truman Show didn't know if the film would be believable and they wondered if they had gone too far. Looking at it from hindsight, it would seem that they didn't go far enough. They didn't consider that as opportunities became available, people would willingly film themselves and deliver to an audience regularly, that reality television would construct and manipulate how we view the world, and also force people into scenarios they may not normally find themselves in. And all this is because we'll watch, just like the people who watch The Truman Show. Number 2. Contagion We would like to think that watching the 2011 film Contagion in 2023 was too soon. There's nothing eerier than watching a movie about a pandemic that starts in China and takes over the world and forces people to socially distance only three years following the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. We're apparently in the minority as this movie had a resurgence of interest during the pandemic with many people watching it. Were they trying to see all the warning signs we missed? or to see how similar or different the situation was to what we were experiencing. In the movie, like in real life, the MEV1 disease originates in China. At the end of the movie, it is revealed that the disease is due to climate change, which is one of the theories about the origins of COVID-19. Both diseases come from animals, in the film it's pigs, and in real life it's likely bats. The film discussed social distancing, a term many of us had never heard before the COVID-19 pandemic. MEV1 was a respiratory disease carried by droplets, exactly like COVID-19, and it could be transmitted while people were asymptomatic, like COVID-19. The symptoms of MEV1 were fever, sweating, cough, and headaches, which were also symptoms of COVID-19. Other symptoms of MEV1, including frothing at the mouth and seizures, 
were not symptoms of COVID-19. In the film we watch as the CDC and the HOW work while the pandemic is unfolding to understand how it transmits and its symptoms and they work to create a vaccine. We also watch as stress and paranoia inflict on the population as people struggle to deal with the repercussions of the illness and we see people start to wear face masks. Another aspect of the film that was too real to life was Jude Law's character, a blogger who says he has a cure called Frosythia. It's reminiscent of people hawking hydroxychloroquine even though there was no evidence that was a cure for COVID-19. It was not only hawked by YouTube personalities and conspiracy theorists, but also by then-president of the United States, Donald Trump. The film shows desperate people willing to try anything out of fear of becoming sick and out of paranoia that remedies for medical professionals weren't what they claimed to be. However, the film also missed some other elements of the pandemic that we experience. The screenwriter of Contagion, Scott Z. Burns, discussed parts of the COVID-19 pandemic that he wished he had addressed in the film. One such topic was how marginalized people were disproportionately affected by the pandemic. Many black and brown people were considered essential workers and they were exposed more to the virus and they suffered from the disease more than any other group. Also, Burns says that he wished he had discussed in the film how people with access to health care experienced the pandemic differently from those who didn't have access. It would be interesting to see how these elements would change the film. Contagion was so real to what we experienced during the COVID-19 pandemic because Burns talked to people at the HOW and actors in the film spoke with experts. For example, Kate Winslet spoke with people at the CDC. Jude Law even said they had experts on set during filming and those experts assured Law that this kind of pandemic would happen in the future. It was just a matter of when. The only thing we didn't find realistic was that everything started returning to normal when they got the vaccines. We think we can all attest to the fact that certainly not what we experienced with COVID-19. Number 1. 2001 – A Space Odyssey There's nothing like science fiction to take a stab at what the future might look like. In 2001, A Space Odyssey, released in 1968, is no exception. While the film is a little experimental in places, there are many aspects of the film that we've seen come to pass. Also, one scene, while traveling in space in what looks like airplane seating, each seat has a screen in front of them. One such item is the news pad that astronauts use while in space. It looks just like a tablet, and in the scene in the film, the two men had it on their table and watched as they ate their food. The film directly impacted that same technology. In fact, Samsung used the film in court to show that Apple didn't invent the tablet. That's how influential 2001 A Space Odyssey is. Another way the film influenced Apple is through the term EvaPod, which is used in the movie and is where the name iPod comes from. Skype, FaceTime, Zoom, and Teams, none of these technologies existed in 1968, yet there's a scene where people speak on the telephone while they're doing so through video calls. Also, one scene, while traveling in space in what looks like airplane seating, each seat has a screen in front of them. This may not seem like much now, but 1968 airplanes didn't have personal screens on each seat. Finally, there's a scene where there's a voice processing to confirm someone's identity while going through immigration. This type of technology was only put into practice in the late 2000s. It's similar to newer facial recognition technology used for the most mundane task of unlocking one's phone. While some of these technologies existed, in our research we found video phones in the 1930s and voice recognition in the 1950s. Still, these technologies are nowhere near as powerful as they are today and as they are depicted in the movie, and they weren't on the mass market or available for consumers as they are now. One particular computer, HAL, speaks with the astronauts, answers their questions, and performs tasks. HAL is similar to Amazon's Alexa, 
a small machine that can call people, tell them the temperature, find music, and research information. The scariest thing is that Alexa speaks to the user as Hal speaks to the astronauts. While Alexa isn't like Hal in that Hal rebels against the astronauts when it realizes that it's going to be shut down after a mistake, the artificial intelligence of Hal is reminiscent of new AI technology for illustrations and writing. A user must only provide a few words into a software, an image pops up, or a story is written. Technology hasn't reached HAL levels of artificial intelligence, but it is moving in that direction. Finally, the entire film takes place in space, and space tourism is an everyday practice. While we are not at the stage where we travel to and from space the same way we do airplanes worldwide, there are tourist flights to space. Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos is taking different people to space, and these are people who aren't astronauts or have no experience with space exploration. While it comes at a huge cost, they go to space for a visit and return to Earth, so it looks like space tourism is here. There are a few ways in which the movie failed to predict the future. This includes one display on their computer screens, there were multiple windows open while people worked or music in one tab, a shopping cart available in another tab, and a cab video open in a third tab. Also, the people in the film were dressed fairly formally. One article argued, this is not how fashion moved forward. It was even becoming less formal at the time when hippies and the counterculture movement were in full swing. These are just a few notable differences between the scarily accurate depictions of what technology might look like and how the future ended up being different from the film. One Wired article pointed out the reason there were so many ways in which the film ended up reflecting reality was that 2001 influenced reality. 2001 was a major success and captured the imagination of many, and those people who ended up working in technology were inspired by what they saw in the film, and therefore it influenced their work. Regardless, these three films show that filmmaking and art have a way of analyzing and imagining the future. Much of this is due to studying human nature, how people react, what we desire in the future, and envisioning those real emotions and behaviors with the evolution of climate, culture, and technology. Thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you found it interesting. If you did find it interesting, please make sure you subscribe. We'll have a new video about the paranormal every week. If you just discovered this channel, please make sure you check out our other channel, Criminally Listed. We have over 325 videos featuring bizarre but true crime stories. You can find it at youtube.com slash criminally listed. We also have a podcast about cold cases that were eventually solved called Criminally Listed Presents Into the Killing. You can find it on Stitcher, Spotify, Amazon Music, and anywhere you find great podcasts. But that's all for today. Thanks again for watching.